My name is Renee. Um, what I'm going to show you today is, is um, the first parametric construction tool uh, that has been built. And so basically what we have is a tool whereby you can upload a 3D model of what you want to build, right? You give it a certain order and you get some rules and then what happens is you can generate lots and lots of different ways of building it. One crane, two cranes, overtime, no overtime, so on and so forth. Each of these dots is a different way of building a project. As you can see, I can build it for in 900 days, 934 days, 800 days, and 723 days. And I can expand these dots and then kind of see, you know, a step-by-step, -step, um, step-by-step kind of um, 40 model of how this project gets built, right? Um, so I'm going to basically give you guys a little bit on the theory, and then I'm going to kind of give you a quick demo of a simple project. So we're going to run through something that looks like this. And so basically, you know, this is, I think, the, the next step beyond BIM. Um, so back to, you know, the, uh, the presentation. And so what is parametric, right? And so if you look at the history of parametric technology, um, on the bottom half of the screen, a gentleman called Sam Geisberg, who's Leningrad, tons of people can see, and then creates the first parametric mechanical design tool, right? On the top half of the screen is the first parametric and, uh, architectural tool, which is Revit. BIM is fundamentally two technologies. BIM is uh, object-oriented, which means that the, the software understands that, you know, it's a column, made of concrete on the second floor. That's an object. It's not just a bunch of lines, basically, right, or planes. And then the second technology in BIM is, is uh, parametric. So what does that mean? Um, that means is that you can do something like this. that you can change the if you were to draw this by hand right you would draw a cylinder somebody says hey i want a smaller cylinder you redraw it hey i want a bigger cylinder you redraw it right so you got to redraw the cylinder everything the tool's parametric you got a height and radius those are your parameters you can change the parameter and the tool redraws the object right in our case for the first time in history we don't redraw we rebuild Right. And so with Alice, what happens is you change, you know, the number of cranes, the number of crews, and basically um, press the button and rebuild it. This is basically the parameters that you can change with Alice. You can see you can change the available space, sequence, crews, radii, location of cranes, and so on and so forth. Press the button and rebuild it. Right. And so... Um, Long story short, what I'm looking for is this. So this is basically what, what we've done with Alice. And so what we've done is we split planning from scheduling. And so today, planning and scheduling are considered the same thing. At Alice, they're definitely not. Planning is where you create the rule set. You send it to the scheduler, and the scheduler generates lots and lots of options that satisfy that rule set. You can interpret the results. Now, the reason you do it this way is you can change anything in the plan. You can tweak it, press the button, and rebuild it, if that makes sense, right? And so, um, you, you can, as a result, rebuild your project over and over again as many times as you want. You can add a delay, resequence, you can try faster on concrete, you can add a crane, rebuild it, right? Now, um, why do you need that? Well, 
If you look at the two halves of the software, planning and scheduling, right? Planning is how you set up your rule set. Scheduling is um, scheduling is, is how you assert like assert the start times of your tasks, right? And so the problem with scheduling today, I guess, and it's kind of worth um, jumping into. So let's assume that you've got a, a, a parking lot, right, a parking garage, and that parking garage is made of three sections, east, center, west, right? When you have these three sections, right, you've got your beams formed, X formed, steel, pour, cure, stress, prepare, strip, strip, and so on and so forth, right? You can see that these nine tasks are repeated for the west section, the center section, and the east section, right? They're repeated on the ground floor and the level one, level two, and so on and so forth. So you give that to your scheduler, your schedule sort of sets up the problem, right? They create, you know, these tasks, right? What you can see here is that what we've done is we colored these tasks based on the crews that are available, right? And so orange, right, is, is the, the carpenter crew. Yellow is the beam swarmer, red are the steel, uh, sorry, uh, blue are the steel, red is the, the masons, right? Um, is this clear to everybody? Or does this make sense so far? Good question. Uh, yes, it makes sense. Perfect. Well, yeah, um, Bill's got 20 something years in construction, so I hope it makes sense, Bill. Yes. Steve, right. are you following this? Yes, I have a question. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, did you hear that, Renee? Uh, no. Can you repeat the question? So Steve asked, if the carpenters are the first crew, does that mean they get paid more because they're on the top? <laughs> uh, no, not in this case. That's correct. It's, no, it's just showing that the, they are the first construction crew that comes in. Um, that's starting the work. And then what this is showing is, is the sequence of which construction crews follow. And so the, so that, go ahead. Hey, just, be, uh, just because it's the, um, essentially this would be like a lower division uh, bachelor's program. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, most of the students haven't had scheduling or anything like that. You know, uh, BIM is pretty much as much as they've seen. So, especially the scheduling thing, they've probably never seen a schedule, I guess. Has anyone seen a schedule before? Anyone? No, no they've never seen a schedule. I've seen plenty of schedules. Yeah, Bill is probably. Okay. Okay, I mean, so this is how schedules work, right? You can see that, that your beams formwork is, takes place from the 4th of April to the 8th of April, right? It takes place on, on these four days, right? Your dex form takes place on these four days, right? And so on and so forth, right? And that tells you when these tasks occur. The, the problem is that you only have one carpenter crew available. So if you look at the schedule, you can see that these tasks all happen at the same time, right? They're all happening on, you know, April 4th. And so with today's tools, what you have to do is you've got to kind of make sure they don't happen at the same time. So you draw these arrows, right? And there's a problem over here because, you know, you don't have more than one of the yellow crews available. You can't do these two things at the same time, so you got to draw another arrow. you got a problem over here, so you draw an arrow, right? And so that's basically, you know, what you do today with today's scheduling tools. Now, you know, Bill probably, you know, might kind of have known about this, but, like, what's happened here is you've hard-locked the West center east sequence i'm going to do west first then center then east well what about east center west alternatively what about for example west east center 
Right. And that's, you know, what current tools today can't do is that dynamic resequencing, right? They can't change the sequence of your project dynamically, if that makes sense, right? So any, any questions this far? So what Rene just showed you is the fundamental problem, like scheduling problem that has no theoretical solution. Like if you ever take a scheduling class, they'll show you what Rene just showed you and they'll tell you there is no solution for that. And uh, that's basically scheduling 101. It's almost the entire, Rene has just showed you, I think in what, three minutes or less, two minutes, probably about an entire semester's worth of course material. You can almost just skip that class now. Yeah. Any questions on that? Bill, are you, you're familiar, are you familiar with this problem? In the field, how do you solve this? Well, yeah, that's like resource management and scheduling, but the way it looks like you're you're giving it different scenarios to uh, see what it works. Right, and in the field, how do you how do you deal with that? You know, because you know, there's three different ways you could build this. You know, what do you do? Um, well, I mean, I just pick one way and stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer. That's actually it. Okay, Renee, I'll let you take it back over. Thanks, for it. So that's basically how things work today, right? Like, the problem is that, that somebody says, okay, well, we're going to do east, you know, then center, then west, right? But, you know, let's say there's a delay and you want to add another crew. So if I have two carpenters and I could do two things at the same time, I could do this, this guy and this guy, right? Alternatively, I could do, you know, these two things and I could do the east and the center and then the, the west, right? So that's what the, the current tool can't really do, right? And so what Alice does is it resequences dynamically, generates lots and lots of options in, in, in how to kind of build this project, if that makes sense, right? And so... What we've done is we've kind of looked at um, you know this is kind of the, the the Alice overview, right? What we've done was we split planning from scheduling, right? We've looked at scheduling technology and how that scheduling technology, you know, today fails or what it can't do, right? So that right half of the screen is what we looked at first. Right? If we sort of thought of Alice in the simplest terms, that's Alice. So this right side is the scheduler, and I showed you guys what the current scheduler cannot do. Right? What the left side, right, is a planner. Right? And a planner has never existed before. Right? And that's how you kind of. The, the difference is instead of me kind of figuring out how to build a whole thing and putting it in a schedule, I actually tell the software, I tell Alice, hey, here are the rules that govern my project. And I'll kind of show you guys those rules in a second. And then I say, you, the computer, go figure out lots of ways to build this project that satisfy those rules. And the rules are pretty straightforward. Like what tasks do you need? What resources do you need? What calendars are you going to be using? Right? So with that, Let's take a look at, so this is how the Alice scheduler works, right? And so you start with a to-do list, a list of tasks that you have to complete to build this project. So if I did all of these tasks, I can go build my project, right? So I don't know if you guys are familiar with precedence, but precedence means basically like I have to complete if, if, there's a presence relationship from A to B. That means I have to complete task A before I start task B. And so the software says, okay, well, if I haven't, you know, I'm building the foundation, well, I can't build the roof now, right? Because I need to have built the 10th floor. I can't build the 10th floor because I build the 9th floor. So it eliminates all of the things that I cannot do. Then it eliminates all the things that I don't have space for. Then it eliminates all the tasks that I don't have resources for. So long story short, this is kind of how the software works. And so it says, okay, at this point in time, I can schedule task one and I can schedule task two. 
And so I'll take task one, schedule it. Now, if you remember, like what the issue with current scheduling technology is that it can't resequence, it can't change the way things are sequenced. And so with Alice, the next time that you run the software, because it runs like 10,000 runs, what it does is it flips that order and schedules process two, right? So the important thing to remember, you know, you can forget about everything that leads up to that, but just this bottom right piece, which is that when you run Alice once, it schedules process one. Oops, there we go. And it assigns a resource to it. And then, then, then it resets everything. The next time you run it, it tries scheduling process two. Right? Does that make sense or? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Any questions in your end, Forrest? Any questions? Questions, questions? Ask right. them. Good. Okay. So, you know, how the heck does this thing work, right? And so, let's take a look. So, this is a, a simple project, right? That has 74 elements, right? And so what we want to do is we want to build it in Alice. We want, I want to tell Alice how to build it. So the truth is, that, believe it or not, there's actually three rules. They're all pretty damn simple. Rule number one, right, is uh, rule number one is which element supports which element, right? And so what Alice does is, is she'll break the 74 elements into nine support groups, right? The first level is the basement, right? You can kind of see that my foundation, sorry, my foundation supports the foundation walls, it supports the ground floor slab, it supports the elements, support the slab and so on and so forth, right? Does that make sense? You know, the physics, right? Obviously, the foundation support, the foundation wall support the, uh, the slab and so on and so forth. Yeah, makes sense. All right. So that's rule number one. And so what you can do is, for example, check it, right? So is this kind of looking right? Yeah, that looks right. So the thing that's kind of confusing is why do we have these supports here, right? I would expect that once we've built this, all of the roof sort of shows up at once, right? So if I click this guy, for some reason, that yellow thing is physically supported by the slab. So somebody's kind of forcing the roof to be built, you know, from left to right, one at a time, right? I don't like that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to supports. And I am going to delete that. And I am going to delete that. Mm -hmm. So now if I look at my supports, there we go. So I'm no longer forcing that roof to be built one at a time from left to right. It's now going to be built, you know, as fast as it can be, depending on the number of crews. If I have three crews, it'll get built in one go. If I have one crew, then it will try... A, B, C, C, B, A, and so on and so forth. Try all those sequences, right? It basically gets over the, 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 the limitations of current scheduling technology, all right? That's rule number one. Rule number two is grouping and splitting, right? And so what I can see here is that people have not grouped this project together. And so what I will do is I will go back and I'll create groups. And so polygon select spaces create group two. Yeah, never mind. I'll just use a polygon select. Right? And I'm gonna call this what's the foundation? Oops. Don't worry about that. All right. Now the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to call this guy. Oops. 
Oops. Foundation. What? So now I'm going to basically group. This thing already, so let me just double check that. All right, well, I'll just do this. Um, Oh, I think I was selecting the slot. That's what I was doing. But uh, let's just call this East. Uh, this guy. This guy. This guy. Center. Oops. We've actually got a whole bunch of tricks that, that let you do this, but I'm just not familiar with them. So then we group those together. We've now got the slab columns, so that should be pretty easy. So those guys will be ground floor, west columns, right? Um, right. This will be ground floor. East columns. I think we should just group this as first. So, right. Then polygon. Um, second one, pause, columns, oops. All right, and then We've got the roof, and so we can kind of leave the roof, for example, just in pieces right now, right? And so that kind of gives you the grouping, right? So we've gone through physics, so the supports, so this physically supports this, which physically supports this, and so on and so forth, right? We've looked at groupings, how we group stuff, right? So any questions at this point? Nope. Cool. So, so last thing, sorry, go ahead. 
I was just saying it looks good. Okay. So the last thing that we got to look at is, is um, what we call recipes, right? And a recipe is basically how do you build a given element? And so when we look at these elements, right, uh, they are currently all missing recipes. So let us actually just select that. Let me throw something out there real quick, Renee. Uh, this is probably the single most important part of this, uh, of what you're going to see. I mean, that's just from my perspective, Renee, is that this is, the recipes is the core of everything here and a big part of it. Yeah, I agree. All right, okay, refresh this. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to basically tell the software how to build, right? And so to build um, these foundations, right? There we go. We're going to sign a recipe. Uh, oh, look at that. There's a lot of recipes already created for us. Well, that's good. Slab recipe, concrete, concrete recipe with a warning, column recipe, column. All right, let's go to concrete recipe. And the concrete recipe says install formwork, install rebar, pour concrete, cure, remove form, right? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to say, again, we're going to remove this material requirement here. We're going to complicate our life. And what we're going to oops, what we're going to say is rebar was going to take us two times eight, sorry, two days, eight, two eight-hour days, right? So uh, what we want to do is we want to then say concrete recipe, and we're going to create a copy. There we go, concrete recipe two, I guess. We're going to go into this concrete recipe and we're going to say, all right, so we're going to rename this one and call it. This is how to build a foundation, all right? Well, if I was going to build a foundation, I probably want to start with excavator. I'm going to create excavation. Right? The labor will be no subcontractor. Type will be. Test labor coming. Coming to concrete. Yeah, I don't see excavator right here. So let's just say that I'm going to create a new crew. And I'm going to create one. And it's going to be called excavator crew. It said infinite and everybody that found it an hour. But they just work a different work. All right. Excavator. excavator. It's going to take me an eight hour day to, to excavate that, right? And some of these just go over here. There we go. So, excavate. After excavating, I think I can put some steel so I can get rid of this guy. Right? So, I can put some steel, that's how I can put some concrete, and then after that, I can cure, right? And then if I cure, then I can remove the, the formwork. Well, there's no formwork because I dug a hole, right? So let's assume that doesn't exist. And so this is a recipe for a uh, foundation. So excavate, install the steel, pour the concrete, cure it, and you're done, right? Does this make sense? Yes. Talk to that one for a second. Steve, I mean, Bill, that makes sense to you. Yes. Have you, uh, is any of that new to you, Bill? I mean, I know you intuitively yeah, understand. Uh, it, uh, it's pretty uh, familiar to me. I mean, uh, what is that, uh, like a finish, start, zero day schedule there? Or, yep. You know, That's correct. FS is? FS, that task one needs to finish before you could start test. Yep. Yep. You got excavate. This task takes, um, well, 
Steve, you got any questions on that? Because I mean, if you go into civil engineering, this will become you'll be, you'll take this box at some point. Yeah, I, I it looks. Um, I understand it just fine. I mean, you really have any questions? Good time to ask a question. The recipe, the recipes are, I think, deceptively. They seem easy, but this is actually there is so much that goes into this. And when you're actually in the construction field, well, what is the correct recipe? I mean, it's it's not so straightforward. And this software kind of makes it straightforward in a good way. Uh, it makes it easy to to to. Yeah, it looks really good. I like the way it looks. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty simple, right? You know, to build a foundation, I need these tasks. And, you know, if I well, want to put it easy, right? <laughs> this isn't so simple when you're doing this in an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, basically, you know, you got these tasks and they need these resources, right? These resources. Now, the thing with the recipe, though, is that you've done this once, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign it. So I'm going to basically select all of the foundations in this, in this project. So that's 12 foundations, right? I'm going to assign a recipe and we're going to go to this is how to build a foundation. Right? Boom, you're done. Right? Next. Right? Let's hide those for time being and hide those for time being. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to build these foundation walls, right? Are you guys with me? Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, Guys, and what I'm gonna hope to do is. Why are you doing that, Renee? Let me ask the class a question real quick. So well, I'm doing it because um, I've been trying to kind of hide something, which is these little columns in here that are super annoying. But here's what I'm trying to do. You see these guys? Yeah. So they weren't selected. And so if I attach a recipe to them, it's going to think that you need, you know, a day to do each one of these columns, which is not the case. So I was kind of being cutting a corner, and now I'm paying. So basically what I, what I have to do... Um, so that's actually a perfect example of what I wanted to ask, because everyone's making their, their Revit models. And um, so is anybody, when you're building your Revit model, has anyone really thought about how is it going to be built? What sequence is it going to be built as you're building that model? You thought well, about it? I do. Okay. I do, yes. You do as well? I did it. When I built mine, I just was like, hey, look, it's a cool house. You know, I, I didn't think about anything about building it. But like Renee's saying here that when he's got um, – what he's clicking on right now, those columns, because that's going to – when you place the concrete, you would place that column – all at one in one piece. That's that's the point, right, Renee? That you're making. Yep. I mean, basically. I'm not gonna... You know, you know what? I'll, I'll actually leave it as is. You'll see what happens when I don't fix it on the other side, right? Okay. That might be that might be an interesting. Right? So West Because Foundation. when you model it, you model the column separately, but when you build it, that's all going to get placed at the same time. So you know, if you click this, right, you notice that these these columns are not selected, right? So what's going to happen is the software is not going to build these columns separately from the wall. And I'm going to leave that purposefully in there. And you guys will see what will happen. Because we fixed it over here. So you can see here that now it selects everything, right? So anyway, so now, you know, let's basically tell the software how to build a foundation wall, right? So I select them, right? I'm going to go to recipes. And this is how to build a foundation. 
Well, let's see if we can build to the copy. Where is it? Column one, maybe, I guess. Well, that's not a very good recipe. Uh, let's see if we can do better than that. That's better. Uh, let's just create concrete recipe and create a copy. Concrete recipe one. All right, there we go. That looks good. So I'm going to call this as if this is how to build a oops, build a uh, foundation wall, right? And to do that, I'm probably going to do actually, you know, to build a wall, it's the other way around. So you first put you first put the steel. Right. Then you put the formwork, then you pour the concrete, right? You put the steel, you put the formwork, you pour the concrete, you cure it, you remove the formwork, right? So steel, form, pour, cure, new form. It takes two days, one day, one day, three days, one day, right? Looks good. I've already selected all of those guys, so let me then. Um, I'm not gonna say, all right, there. So I gotta go in and select these guys. I gotta select that. And then I gotta assign recipe. I gotta assign this is how you build a five by four. Right? Does that make sense? Yes, makes sense to me. All right. Now it's going to start getting pretty quick from now on. So uh, let's make sure we got some recipes for a slab. I saw one in here. Okay, well, it's not a very good recipe for a slab. So maybe we should delete that. And uh, concrete one. Okay, let's just call that concrete recipe one. So and for slab you do do formwork. You want to get rid of the materials in there. Let's not complicate our life right now. We're going to stick to carpenter. The duration would be I would say two times eight. Right? It's going to take two days, two eight hour days. Right? Sixteen seventy two eight. Right? That looks good. This is how to build a slab. And then so I've got to select this guy, this guy, this guy, and then this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and this guy right? And then I assign a recipe. This is how you build a slab assign. So let me see here. Uh, what else? So if I look at my groups, the little dots are the ones that haven't been assigned. So West Foundation. Hmm. Oh, West Foundation Wall. Yeah, that's the one we left, I think, in purpose. My columns haven't been assigned. Well, that's not good. So let me go into recipes. Uh, column recipe one. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Let's get rid of that. Thanks. Column recipe. That doesn't look good either. Let's get rid of that. Column one. That doesn't look good. Let's get rid of that. So column, no, that doesn't look good. All right, the concrete recipe. So as the columns are going to be similar to the walls, right? So I'm going to create a copy of that. I'm going to say this is how you build a column. Right? And to do that, I need to put some steel, pour the formwork, pour it here, and so on and so forth. Right? So I think I'm done there. I selected all the columns. I want to assign a recipe. This is how you build a column. There we go. 
As you can now see that the staircase is the last thing left. And to do that, I'm going to create a new recipe. I'm going to, let's assume that the staircase is prefab. So I'm going to call this, this is how you pop a prefab stair into place. Create task, labor, oops, no, what I want, initial contractor. Mm, let's create a new crew and call it crane operator. Work week. There we go. Um, it takes one day to lift this thing and pop it in place. Right? Oops. There we go. All right. So this goes here. Um, that goes there. And we need to to sign it. This is how we pop this three goes to every place. All right. Cool. There we go. So that gives us. Um, how we're going to build this. Uh, at this point, we're done. We went through the physics, we checked it, tweaked it, we grouped things, and then we created recipes and assigned them to it. A recipe basically has some tasks and some resources that fill those tasks. The difference, though, is we created one recipe for columns, and then we assigned it to all of the columns. Right, so all of these guys, right, were assigned the same recipe, right? So for example, all the slabs were assigned the same recipe. Any questions at this point? Any questions from you, Paris? It's gonna take a while. I know I do have a question. Mm -hmm. You said One you of my questions to... is, you know, like in theory, these recipes will, you know, there's not like an infinite number of recipes. Mm -hmm. And I've seen different companies that have their own recipes. Mm -hmm. They get their, you know, and invariably they end up with their standard recipe set, which for heavy construction is probably, you know, there's like 24 recipes. And then they end up with some special scenario where they needed like, you know, and then they end up, you know, at the end of the day, they've got like 150 recipes and about a third of them they, they use like every fifth year or something. Are you finding that at all with this? I mean, because you're, you know, this is real for you of seeing how this gets applied. Are you able to see? Yeah, so most, the, the thing that surprised me is you can build almost any project in the world yeah. with about 20, 30 recipes. Right. You know, that, that surprised me. I thought there'd be a lot more, but. Yeah, this is a $200 million project end-to-end. -end. Columns, bulkhead, you know, elevator machine room, elevators, elevator shaft, skin, foundation, phase one interior, slabs, and that's it. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, it looks really uh, great. I never, I'm, is this called Alice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Alice. It stands for Artificial Intelligence Construction Engineering. Yeah, I like it. Well, it saves a, saves a hell of a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it took, took a long time to build that model. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I, I mean, we can set up any project, any size, any complexity in about three days. So we've done, you know, giant like six billion dollar airports, hospitals, bridges, whatever. It takes about, you know, three to five days to set it up and then you're off to the races. Then you're then you're running lots of stuff. Which is kind of where we're at with this other over here. We've set it up and now kind of like to leave the tabs open so I'm gonna do that. We can kind of go back to the plan if we want to. So now we can actually go to schedule. We can go to fun start starts. Maybe something to point out is this is all being done to the browser. Yeah, yeah. That's you. 
Well, there you go. So we just round the schedule and got some base parameters, right? We got one, 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 right? So I don't know. Let's uh, let's let's play around with this. Let's assume we got one crew of each type. So that would be the slowest you could build this project, right? That must be the union crew out there on the far right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can see that there's a solution that Alice found that's 189 days, and she quickly started to zoom in. She's running through millions of sequences, so the reason I showed you guys that limitation is what Alice is doing is ABC, CBA, BAC, and so on and so forth, trying lots and lots of sequences, and only ever giving you a new dot if it's either faster or cheaper than all the other dots. So you'll notice that this is the first dot she found, ran it, ran it, oh, this is faster and cheaper, right? This is cost, this is duration. So you go into the bottom left, this is faster. It's a little more expensive, but it's, it's faster, right? This one's cheaper. This one's faster and cheaper, and I found this one, and so on and so forth, and this is the last fastest and cheapest schedule she found. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's really nice. So now, right, what we're going to do is we're going to say new schedules, right? Um, let's run it. Brian, uh, Bill, don't turn me in for making union jokes either, man. Let's run it with one of each crew, right? And so... Create it. You can see here that if I click on this and sort of analyze it, you know, it will show me your model is loading. You can kind of see here that, you know, let's go maybe day by day, right? So, so that's an old run. You can kind of see that it's sort of all over the place. Somebody kind of messed that up. That doesn't make any sense. So let's, let's get rid of this guy, right? So now the software is running. Yeah, I'm going to delete this. Whatever that was. There we go. I started a started to give us some options. Can I throw a little commentary in there, Renee? Yeah. So uh, one of the things I really like about this software is, you know, as a construction crew, you know, and I make some jokes about about the union work, but you know, one of the things is is as a as a uh, construction union, we're able to always say, hey, you know, this isn't safe, and uh, we want to hold up this work, and we want to you know stop and think about it, or we want to change equipment. But the pushback from management is invariably, well, we don't know what that's going to do to the project. You know, just keep going. You know, I, we, I used to hear this, just get it done real quick. And, you know, I know it's unsafe, but just real quick, real quick. And as the construction crew, it's hard to push back and say, hey, you know, I don't think that's going to really cause a problem on the project. But what Renee has here is we could, we could change that and say, hey, what if we did wait, you know, and, and, and do something different? You just push a button, and, and ten minutes later, less than that, right? I mean, this is like a minute later. We can see what it does to the schedule. We can say, "Hey, look, we got eight different, you know, good options we can follow." We can say it doesn't do anything to the project. In fact, maybe it helped out. So, for me, this this actually helps out a lot if you're the construction crew, because now you have some flexibility in changing the plan. You're not you're not locked in, where you can't, you know, where you go. Well, this is the plan. We can't change anything. Yeah, I mean, what Forrest is trying to say is that, like, here's a, here's a situation you run into, right? The, the, the owner tells you, you know, add more people, right? And you're like, look, it's not going to make a difference. We've already added as many people as this project will hold. Currently, you can't, you know, if you put 100,000 people on this job, right, on this thing, you know, you're obviously not going to build it any faster than if you had, I don't know, 20 or 30 or whatever the number is. But you can't figure that out today, right? 
you know, another thing that kind of Forrest was saying is like, okay, so if there's a delay or something changes, you know, how can I best, you know, what's the best way to mitigate that delay, right? And, and what the tool can tell you, for example, is like, well, you think you're delayed, but if you resequence, you're actually, you know, come out, kind of going kind to of finish at the same time. Yeah. That makes sense. It does for me. Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah. So yeah. then, so then notice, so, 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 you know, we ran it. And, and again, like I said, it, it, it's running millions of sequences, but it, it only gives you a new dot if it's faster and cheaper than the other dot. So what it's doing is it's running, 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 and it's just kind of saying, nope, I haven't found anything faster than 109 days and cheaper than 963,000. It goes, oh, wait a minute, here's one. And it's running, running, running lots of sequences and discarding everything, discarding everything, and it finds another one, and then it finds another one. And that's kind of the fastest and cheapest it found, right? So that's the one I opened, right? And so when I looked at it, you know, I was like, oh, okay, well, this looks, this looks like it's, you know, doing well, right? So let's, let's, oops, I don't know what I just did there. Uh, no, no, just uh, stay there. That's all good. So let's go day by day, right? And what you look for is, is this, you know, this view here. <laughs> and so, you know, you can see that we're building it. That looks all right. And wait a minute. You remember how we didn't group those columns, right? So now they're causing a bit of an issue, right? They're kind of showing off. That's getting built, you know, so, well, you know, anybody in construction would tell you like, hey, that's a dumb idea. Like I'd have to put form work, build this. No, 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 no. I want to build everything like this thing is built. I want to build it in one go. Does that make sense? I'm not going to build it one by one. I'm going to build this damn thing in one go, right? So, you know, today you'd have to redraw those arrows. You'd have to fuss with this, this Gantt chart, right? Which, which you know, we think is boring. So with Alice, all you got to do is you go back in here. You're like, oh, okay, I guess I messed up. All right, no problem. Sorry about that, guys. Um, you do that, 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 that. That. that there we go. Got a group, and I'm going to call this East Foundation Wall. Right now, I go back here. I just say new schedule. Uh, Renee, have you done this with mechanical systems at all? I've done it with everything. Yeah, you name it. Okay. We've done it for like skyscrapers, shopper malls. Bridges, I don't know, like whatever you name it, data centers, parking lots, etc. One You're like on year five by now, aren't you? It's been a while. Yeah, well, I mean, it took us about three and a half years to crack the technology. No one's ever solved it before, you know. Right. It's like you want. Yeah, in case anybody didn't know, this is what Renee's doing here. This is this is incredibly unusual. This is you're not going to find this type of technology anywhere else. So now we, we've grouped all those things in one, so let's see the effect, right? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, okay. Oh, no. We didn't assign a recipe to it. Hmm. Uh, oh, I don't know. Really Are you still there, Forrest? I am. Okay. Yeah, I saw that pop up there. Yeah, try to kick me out of something. Uh, yeah, we used to be able to cancel. Anyways, uh, that's not correct because I forgot to sign the recipe. So I got to go in here, sign the recipe, which is let's say build a foundation wall. All right, Bravo. Uh, all right. You see, there's no more yellow dots because now everything has been assigned a yellow dot. Mm -hmm. And so this thing is now, you know, the problem is that we forgot to assign the recipe. And so what will happen is that that thing just starts appearing, you know, on, on day one, right? You see that? Yeah. We didn't assign a recipe to it. So the software is like, oh, you know, you don't need... Like there's no tasks that I need to build it, so it just magically appears. You told me you don't need anything for it to be there, so it's there. So I'm like, okay, well I screwed that up. 
So I went back in there, signed the recipe, right? And so now let me create a new run. And if, just throw that on there. If you were using that Gantt chart like when Renee showed us to begin with, you almost never would have found that error. You, you would have been halfway through the project. You would have found out your schedule was wrong. All right, so then we'll just switch this to one, one, one. All right. You can kind of see that when we forgot to assign a recipe to some of the elements, unsurprisingly, the project was faster. You know, like, sure, if you didn't account for the fact that you had to, you know, actually build these guys that magically appear, then, yeah, it's faster. That's how you become low bid. Yeah, exactly. So now you can see that this thing is queued. It's kind of crazy, right? It, it fires up an Amazon EC2 server, right? So it's you, you basically can, can just fire up. You see You're on the Amazon well. server. What are you pulling bunch see, of cores on it now? So you can see when we accounted for it, it slowed us down a little bit. You know, which which kind of makes sense, right? And so if I go back into if I open this guy, right? Why why is there different color circles? Uh, so the difference between the colors is a different run, the different parameter. The difference between a, dots of the same color is sequence. So oh. ABC, CBA, and so on and so forth. That's kind of why I showed you guys that example. Yeah, you're changing the parameters and it changes the color. Correct. But, but the thing is that there's so many friggin' sequences. Like, I don't know if you thought of it, but if you've got nine columns and you schedule them one at a time, you've got nine choices for your first column, eight choices for your second column, seven choices for your third column, there's, there's nine factorial, there's 362,000 ways to schedule nine columns. Hey, Renee, go through the factorial real quick, because even I'm not sure if I, I remember factorial, but just this is where Renee is really good at this. Yeah, it's, it's kind of similar. I took like a risk, a risk management, and they, they had some kind of sequence software to figure out risks and stuff like that. Was it five times four times two times three? I mean, five times four times three times two times one. Is that factorial, Renee? Is that how it works? I don't know how for me. So, am I wrong? <laughs> cool. Basically, You got nine columns, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got, you know, you want to schedule them. So which which column can you do first? You got nine choices, right? Mm -hmm. So you got nine choices for the first one, right? So let's say you pick this guy, right? How many choices you got for the second column? Eight. Eight. How many choices you got for the third column? Oops. Seven. There you go. Yeah. So seven, et cetera, et cetera. So that, you know, that's nine factorial. That's how you write it. There we go. And so nine factorial is actually equal to. There we go. Oh, Google does factorial? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> it should. It should. Um, you have to write Google and be like, what's up? No, it should do this. I've done it a lot. There it is. 25 million to 200. No, 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 no. What the heck? I know, huh? I've done this so many times. We've got to change it. Someone's getting fired at Google. Oh. There's 300,000 ways to schedule nine columns. Yeah. But the, the, because there's so many goddamn sequences, you know, you 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 do that for, we do that for you automatically if that makes sense so all the other parameters you change yourself you change them manually 
you add a crane, remove a crane, ch change the grouping, add the grouping, change the production rates, change the durations, whatever. The thing that we do for you is sequence, right? So now we've run this thing with one crew, right? So let's see what happens if, if you know, let's try infinite crew. Well, actually, it's not infinite, it's saturation, right? That's what we call it. The, the maximum number of crews that this, this, this thing can, can handle, if that makes sense. We're going to flood this thing with resources. And what you're doing right now, Renee, this is how I was taught to solve that problem that you started off with is you always schedule assuming infinite crews, and then you show the schedule like in a last planner, and you let the superintendent in the field decide, okay, how many crews are we gonna actually have? And you do that um, three weeks before the work's done. Which is not a solution, right? There you go. So if you had a saturation number, right, you know, instead of finishing in 85 days, you finish in 67 days, but your cost went up substantially, right? If I looked at this and I kind of click on it, right, you can kind of see here that I'm going to build this thing, you know, one day at a time. And you can see that because I've got so many people, I can kind of do things, you know, everything in one go. Right. Does it show you uh, a list here of how many crews you have? Just to get an idea of. Uh, yeah. So you can go to analytics. So, uh, crew utilization. So you've got two, three. Three two? crews is the maximum you're using. That's not so bad. Well, I mean, think about it for us, right? You only got three sections. Yeah. One, two, three, right? So, you know. Yeah. So if, you, if you're if you're if you're here, you can only really use two crews, one two because you got two sections, right? If you move here, you could have three, one. There's only one piece, right? You could have three, right? That's one, two, three, right? Three. And notice that the, the software will build it according to the precedent, according to supported by, because you have so many crews, you'll build all of this in one go, all this in one go, all this in one go, all this in one go, right? That I don't know anybody else, but I'm sold. I wouldn't want to work on a project without this tool. You know, I'd want to have those insights. Maybe I wouldn't follow some of them. I might go with my own thing, but I want to know, I want to see the, the situation. Yeah. So that's basically, uh, that's basically it, you know, you can obviously go back in there, schedule another run, you know, you can say, hey, you know, I'm going to try, for example, you know, group this into one, or I'm going to try and force a certain sequence. So, so notice that, for example, let's just say, let's assume I go in here and I say, you know, this support, you know, I'm going to now force this guy to. So you know, when it's factoring in the, the cost, do you have to put the parameters in that as far as uh, like if they're working overtime or not overtime and different? Yeah, so, so what it does is it factors in the, um, you know, if there's idle times, right? And it definitely factors in overtime, right? And so, yeah, it factors in if the crews are waiting around. What I just did is I forced those slabs to go one, in, one at a time in this order. You see that? So now when I run it, I'm pretty sure that's going to slow me down because I can't build all of them in one go. And so when I click, you know, new schedules, force, oops, force the slabs to get built in one go. And so that, 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 that.
<laughs> so are you like resequencing throughout the project? Because you're out, you're going to get the <coughs> delays and then re you're going to have to. Yeah, you can definitely up update progress. We uh, we're not sort of showing that now. Oh my God, look at that! So that that change alone, you know, cost you went from sixty seven to hundred days. It's kind of interesting, right? If you force it to do one slab at a time, it really slowed you down. So what slowed you down was um, this thing. So that's all the gravy, and then. Now, you'll notice that I had to build that and finish that whole thing and then that and finish that whole thing and then that and finish that whole thing, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Same with the roof. You know, I got to do that and then that and then that. And that really, really slowed things down. Um, you bring the models in as IFCs or what, what do you, what's the... The Revit, but we're, we got a guy right now that's, that's going to give us the ability to import anything. So, right on. So that's uh, that's kind of it from from me, Forrest. Okay. Ask questions. You got Renee here. I mean, let me tell you, this is probably the most expensive presentation you've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. I understand yeah. it, and I appreciate this. Yeah, yeah welcome. I really like it. it. Looks really good. So this is your uh, creation. Is that yeah, it's my baby. That's for sure. Excellent. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks a lot, guys. Um, Forrest, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you for your time, everybody. And uh, yeah, good luck. Yeah. Good night. Thank you, Renee. I'll probably make a video out of this and make it available to the rest of the class for everybody that wasn't here. A lot of the students have jobs, mm -hmm. and they have pretty. You know, if they're not here, because we're missing quite a few students, but if they're not here, there's usually a pretty good reason. They'll appreciate having the video. Super. Sounds good. That we can look up more more info on your products, or yeah, just go to our website, alistechnologies.com, and uh, just fill out. There's a there's a you know give me more info where I'm interested. Should be somewhere up up front. Uh, find out more. Yeah, there you go, Renee. What's your what's your sales model right now? Let's say Bill here wants you to come out and uh, to his company. Yeah, so the sales model is, is generally people will start off by buying a, uh, an onboarding project and then, you know, it's a per project, you know, licensing model. And so they'll buy it for a project and then go from there. All right. Very Super. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Renee. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.